This is the Conscious Syncretist, and we're here with another Friday Flourish. This week, we're going to talk about that lovely move that several callers have decided that they want to pull out of late, the men's chain. As much as, it, it, as one would like to believe that it's just like a lady's chain, only the worlds are reversed, there actually are a couple little mechanics that are a bit different. For those of you who have not been lucky enough to have a caller pull this one, it ends up looking like this. Now, as you can see, there are, there's a little bit of a different role here because obviously I'm the one kind of controlling the spin and he's the one doing the spinning and recovering from the spinning. Anyway, um, the other nice thing about this is that it does mean that not only do you get a nice little roll reversal, so you can give some of the guys who spin you really, really hard taste their own medicine, assuming that they're okay with that. Um, it also means that you can, you can take a look at what actually makes a good a good lead going through that move. So there are a few points that I want to make on this. Um, the first of which is that because your partner is the one spinning, he's not necessarily going to have as much recognition of where he is in space at any given point in time because the world's going by him as he's, as he's twirling. So you're going to need to be really careful to make sure that you're guiding him the way, you, the, the way he needs to be guided. Um, the other thing is when you start spinning somebody, they're going to start moving one way. In order to make sure that he doesn't, I don't spin him into the next set, I need to be walking around to go against him. So it ends up, so what ends up happening is you end up with me moving this way as he moves the other way. I'm moving in my own little circle, just like in a, if I was going to lead a regular courtesy turn. A uh, couple notes for the guys on this. Uh, what you find is a lot of the a lot of the female dancers out there they're perfectly okay with getting twirled when they're going through a ladies' chain of their own, but they're not sure themselves of what that twirl feels like from the other side from from leading the twirl. Uh, as most leads know, when you're twirling someone on ladies' chain, you're giving a lot of that. Uh, centripetal momentum yourself in that lead uh, on the hand up above. Uh, you probably won't get as much of a strong lead uh, from, from people who are more accustomed to the follow uh, when you get trolled yourself. So you have to be prepared to uh, provide more of that momentum yourself. It means you're just going to be kicking off more uh, as you're doing the troll yourself. The other particular thing that needs to be kept in mind is that while my partner and I are generally about the same height, there is a bit of a height differential generally between most women and most men, and usually the women are shorter. This also means that when a gen is twirling a lady, he can rather easily reach up over her head and proceed to twirl her and guide her just fine. However, if the gen is taller than you and he's trying to go through this, some, some adjustments need to be made. Guys, keep keep your elbows in. One of my less proud dancing moments was when I was dancing with one of my regular partners. I was getting twirled and when I wasn't paying too close attention, I managed to elbow my partner straight in the jaw. It was, keep your elbow tucked in. Don't, don't do that. Yeah, you really don't want your partners taking it on the chin, especially considering that the following dance you will probably have a lady's chain and you will probably have a chance to be in the opposite position. So, with all that in mind, what a men's chain ends up looking like is what if you end up doing a twirl, is something like this. This has been the Contra Synchrotist. Join us again next week for another Friday Flourish. Thanks for watching.